and, and all these, these documentaries would come on about this little fearless little mongrel would just charge around, 40 k's a day it would do. 40 k's, get around, eat everything, you know, attack anything and just, it actually, you know, you've already all seen that one where it got bitten by that cobra or whatever and, it, and the venom got too much and she bloody keeled over for a few hours, had a bit of a kip and then he sparks back up and, <laughs> you know, keep, keeps eating the bloody cobra. You know, I was like, that's how I want to live life. <laughs> Dad always told me, he goes, son, he's up every day now, he goes, son, if you don't know what to say, you don't know how to answer it, just tell him what you did in the holidays. <laughs> <laughs> so, here they are. So, now, the 20, 37th minute, uh, there was a change of play, and how do you feel that impacted the bloody result of the game? And I'm like, holidays. <laughs> Where were we? And you just tell them a story, mate, because at the end of the day, people don't give a rat's about the question or the answer. They just want to be entertained by a story. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> Life's a bit serious, you know. Like, some of these ties are a bit too tight. And <laughs> just take the pace off a bit, eh? Just, buddy. <laughs> don't you reckon? You know, everyone's a bit stressed from work. Just, yeah. That's, it, that's why I suppose I do it, mate. I'm just trying to show that you know life's life's not too serious at the end of the day. I mean, you, you, all we all know someone who's who's dying of cancer or who already has. You know, when, who's next? And um, what, why why spend that time, buddy, all pent up and worrying? I was telling a story to this old mate beside me. Here. It's not a bad unit. I was sitting up sitting next to a bloke. He's all right. <laughs> <laughs> He's wearing a pink shirt, but I still we still got along. <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, I was, I was saying, mate, like I was driving along the other day and, and all of a sudden, I don't know if I was in the right or wrong, but someone beeped at me and they're blowing up, going, oh, yeah, yeah. and, you know, you can, sure, you can turn and just go, you bastard, and give him a mouthful, or you can go, what's going on in his life that's tipped him over the edge and made him launch this barrage of emotion and things that, that I don't even know what's going on. Like, it could have been a death in his family, it could be something going on, so I reckon you just... Fair enough, mate, you know. Bit of a smile, bit of a sorry, and on your, on your way. That's what I'm saying. I, life's a bit serious. <laughs> okay, so there was the National Poetry Championships were taking place, and uh, there was two finalists. There was a, a bloke from University of New South Wales, and there was a country bumpkin from out west. So they had 20 seconds to come up with a poem about Timbuktu. Up first, the uni university student. Oh, he's recording. <clears throat> and he goes, On the lonely desert sands crossed a lonely caravan. Men on camels, two by two. Destination, Timbuktu. And the crowd went wild. Are you beauty? That's bloody fantastic. 20 seconds. And then Country Bumpkin's turn steps up to the plate. And he goes, Tim and I, off hunting went, found three girls in a pop-up tent. They were three and we were two. So I bucked one and Tim bucked two.